Okay, from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Chapter 5, beginning at verse 18. Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Gospel reading. The Gospel reading for this afternoon is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 14, verse 15 to 21. Glory to Christ, our Saviour. Let us read this uh, passage together. John 14, beginning at verse 15. Ready? One, two, three. If you love me, obey my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit, who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him, because it isn't looking for him, and doesn't recognize him. But you know him, because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to Christ, Christ, our Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you uh, once again for this beautiful passage, uh, the two passages from Ephesians and John given to us, preserved for us. We pray, Lord, that as we hear your word today, that uh, these words will give us new life. Uh, in you. So we pray this and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Well, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, a very warm welcome and we are returning to this uh, sermon series for Easter and Trinity, representing Jesus to the world. And today in particular, I want to focus on loving God and others as Jesus taught us. I was recently at the hospital uh, one day uh, bringing my dad for a CT scan. And I overheard a comment uh, in a semi-serious tone coming from the counter. And uh, the person said, if you do that to me, and it sounded something unpleasant, I will remember you for the rest of my life. <laughs> wow, I know, it, it's, it, it's, it strikes me because it's like, wow, you know. I mean, you can be angry with someone for the rest of your life. That's a long time, isn't it? But I suppose uh, this is not an uncommon thing. Because from time to time, when we talk to people, uh, they do bring up stories of how they have been offended, right? How they've been offended, and they are angry still after 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, right? Isn't it? Do you, you remember? You come across these people? Now, we certainly do not want to carry uh, with us the anger for so many years. Some people carry the anger in them for so many years that they fail to realize that they have developed an angry look. You come across those people before? I mean, just, they, just, they just look angry all the time. You're just wondering why. Now, and of course, uh, what I'm, as I'm looking across the room now, I see a lot of hungry looks. Uh. Uh, I know that it's about <laughs> dinner time. Okay. Now, as Christians, uh, we want to love God right, and others and not hold on to anger. That's what we want to do as Christians, isn't it? So if we want to represent Jesus rightly to the world on loving God and others, then we want to know what Jesus taught on this matter, isn't it? And so today we want to look at what Jesus taught under three points. First, love without the commandments. Well, problematic. Okay. Second, the commandments without love, legalistic. And then lastly, loving as Jesus taught us, wow, holistic. Okay, so that's what we want to look at today. So let's look at the first point. Love without the commandments, problematic, all right? Now, Jesus said this, if you love me, obey my commandments, John 14, 15. Now, if we love Jesus, we must and indeed will keep the commandments. And of course, one of the commandments is to love each other, John 13, verse 34. Now, this truth is important because it deals with the perversion of the Christian faith by antinomianism, okay? 
Antinomianism. Now, what is this big word, big word about? Antinomianism. Well, it simply means this. It's, it is the view that the commandments of the Word of God have no proper place in Christianity. Okay? Now, usually the expression of this view contrasts law with grace. Okay? Sounds familiar now? It contrasts law with grace in a way that eliminates the value of law entirely. Now, thus, in the name of grace, the God of grace, who is also the God of holiness and justice, is done away with. Okay? Now, people are told that the law is an enemy of grace. Have you heard of that? Okay. That God of uh, Sinai is a stern and unlovable God who is banished from the New Testament. Right? That's what they tell us. And today, the only possible guide for any ethical system is love. Just love. Okay? As, as expected, with this kind of thinking, outright disobedience to the commands of God is acceptable. Thus, marriage may be broken up, adultery sanctioned, contracts dishonored, parents uncared for, worldly goods are sought after with all uh, of one's energy, and countless other things eagerly embraced. So long as the action do not hurt anyone, and love remains the underlying motivation. But this is surely not endorsed by the Word of God. Okay, let's get it clear. Just in case you misunderstand, I need to say clearly now that salvation is never by works. Okay, we need to be clear about this. It is always by grace. And the book of Galatians says it clearly. The proper way to live the Christian life is not by imposing a list of rules, even God-given rules, either upon ourselves or on others. You see, by imposing a list of rules on the Christian may assure an outward, just an outward external conformity to a certain external expression of Christian character. But what happens is this, it does not change the heart. All right? So what happens is that if we are just following a list of rules, we are just doing behavioral alteration. It doesn't transform the heart. It is just an external expression. Okay? We want our heart to be transformed, isn't it? This is why love, not law, must lie at the heart of Christian ethics. But any love that does not express itself in conformity with the commands of Christ is not the kind of love which Christ was speaking. Love indeed is indeed a valuable guideline but only if it is love in conformity with the love of God and in conformity with the commandments God has given to you and I. The Scottish uh, minister said this, McLaren, love is the foundation of obedience. And obedience is the sure outcome and result of love. To put it another way, what it means is this, obedience flow from love. Okay? Obedience flow from love. Obedience is a response to love. Okay? So love without the commandments, what happened? Problematic. Okay? So let's now look at the other way. The commandments without love. Legalistic. In John 14, 15, it reminds us, if you love me, obey my commandments. And again, in another version, if you love me, show it by doing what I have taught you. Okay? Now, as humans, we always have the tendency to swing to the other end, which is dangerous as well. All right? At the one end, it is love surpassing all. Right? That's the first point. Right? One end is love surpassing all. No need to take reference from the Word of God as long as there is love and it does not harm anyone. It is fine. That's what at the one end it is telling us. Now, at the other end, it is the commandments that surpass us all. All right? So there are two ends now. One can easily come to a conclusion that if I do not obey Jesus' commandments, then it means that I do not love Him. And in fact, Jesus did mention in John 14, 24, 
Anyone who, de who doesn't love me will not obey me. Now, this is scary because we know that there are times in our lives when we do not obey Jesus' commands, isn't it? Or commandments. And that would mean that I do not love God. And so what happens is this. We drive ourselves to follow the commandments with great fortitude, self-effort, and even enforce others to do so. So we just don't drive ourselves, we enforce others to do so. Now the word fortitude, according to the Merriam Webster Dictionary, it says this, strength of mind that enables a person to encounter danger or bad pain or adversity with courage. So the strength of mind is actually self-effort, all right? Now at some point in time, this is what happens. This fortitude to obey the commandments become too pressurizing because it is based on self-effort and you cannot sustain it. Too pressurizing. And we slip into some secret sin to relieve the pressure. And it could be drinking, pornography, or any other vices, right? But soon enough, we will feel guilty, right? Because you have secret sin, you feel guilty. And we swing back to this mode of fortitude to push ourselves and others to obey the commandments. You get the cycle, all right? Now, this cycle will continue on and on and on. Fortitude to obey the commandments, pressure gets too much, fall into secret sin, feels guilty, and then fortitude to obey the commands again. And it is a continuous cycle, and it goes on and on. And actually, it gets you nowhere. It gets you, it gets me nowhere. Okay? We need to understand this. Which brings me to the, the third and final point, which is loving as Jesus taught us. And that is holistic. Okay? Now, the first thing to loving God and others as Jesus taught us is this. The act of loving God and others does not begin with me. It begins with who? It begins with God. We, we need to drive this in. The act of loving God and others begins with God. So we find in 1 John 4.19, we love each other because God loved us first. Right? Loving others begins with God. And it is clearly expressed in John 13 verse 1 from which today's scripture flow. Today we read John 14, right? But it flows, first of all, from John chapter 13, verse 1. It tells us this. Before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And loving them to the end, Jesus would go to the cross. So even before John 14, 15, which is, if you love me, obey my commandments, Jesus has expressed that he loved them to the end in John chapter 13, verse 1. And we must not miss this, right? We must not miss John chapter 13, verse 1. If we take John 14, verse 15 as the starting point of love, we will love God and others based on our own strength. You get the point, right? So to love God and others is always a response from me because God loves me first. Right? We need to be reminded again and again that God loves us first. I was recently invited to uh, the Adulam Life Counseling 10th Anniversary Thanksgiving uh, Dinner. Adulam is a Christian ministry that helps people from all walks of life, race and religion to deal with their debt issues. Okay? Adulam will walk with the person through the process of dealing with their debt and even go with the person to talk to their creditors, even the illegal ones, right? To work out a settlement. There are many testimonies of how people have been helped and how the love of God changed the way they live their lives. Now, here is one of the many testimonies. Vincent dropped out of school when he was 13 years old. With a lot of free time on hands, he quickly got involved with bad company, who introduced him to the different kinds of vices. 
By 16 years old, he was hooked on gambling. To feed his addiction, he borrowed money from loan sharks. As soon as he managed to pay them off, he would borrow from them again. All right, so pay and, and then borrow again, cycle. His habit of gambling and borrowing from loan sharks eventually tore his family apart. His wife no longer could bear the, the way he lived his life, uh, filed for divorce, and brought the two children with her. Still, Vincent's gambling habits continued, and when driven to desperation, he became a loan shark runner. And he ended up being arrested, jailed for six months, being a loan shark runner. While in prison, he received a letter from his 10-year-old daughter. The daughter wrote, My beloved father, I hope you will come out early so that you can celebrate my birthday. How are you doing in jail? Are you fine inside there? When he read that, it broke his heart. Now, after he was released from prison, he swore to himself never to gamble again. But in the next few years, he went through the cycle of securing a stable job and then going back to gambling and borrowing two more times. By June 2019, he owed more than 20000 And one creditor even threatened to look for his daughter in the school. At this point, Vincent was entertaining thoughts of suicide. And out of, a, out of the blue, a friend from a prison caught him and wanting to meet him. Now, at a meeting, this friend, who is not a believer, handed him a little book. Now, the friend said, many years ago, somebody gave me this and told me to read it when I face difficulties. Right? The, the friend just gave it to him. And this little book turned out to be a Christian track explaining the good news, the love of God for sinners. Two days later, another friend called and advised Vincent to seek help at Adulam Life Counseling. Vincent turned up at Adulam, and unknowingly, that night when he was there, it was, uh, the pastor was preaching the word of God. And the pastor was just saying this sentence, you are a wolf in sheep's clothing. Wow. <laughs> and that really hit him very hard, although he didn't know the context of that verse. And with that verse, Vincent, he said this, I thought of my past and everything I had done, and I felt disgusted and disappointed with myself. I felt I was such a sinner, and my tear kept flowing and flowing and flowing. At that meeting in Adulam, the pastor came to pray for Vincent and asked if he was willing to receive God's blessing and to become a Christian. And Vincent said, yes. And then after that, Adulam helped Vincent work out something regarding his debt issues so that he could move forward. Vincent eventually secured a job and was even promoted to become the assistant restaurant manager. Some time later, Vincent said, I have many weaknesses, but God loves me. He said, I'm not perfect. But though I'm weak, God is even stronger. And every day he will pen down verses and prayer in his journal. And, and on this particular day, on the 23rd of January 2020, he wrote this, Mighty Lord, thank you for the gift of my reborn life, the knowledge that you have taught me, and the blessings and love that you have granted me. I'm known and also completely loved by you. Even though I'm a sinner, you never turn your back on me. You remain faithful forever. You wash me white as snow through the work on the cross. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. My dear friends, a life that is changed because of God's love The first thing to loving God and others is this. We need to remember that it is a response to God's love, right? Maybe we need to be reminded of God's love again and again, not just today, right? Every day. 
Now, the second thing is this. Let's look at verse 15 and 16. John 14, it tells us this. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And in verse 16, immediately Jesus said this. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. Right? And that he may be with you forever. Interesting. Verse 15 and verse 16. I will ask the Father and will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. So it is interesting that immediately after verse 15, Jesus mentions about giving the Holy Spirit who is our helper. We certainly need a lot of help in our lives as a Christian. Would you agree? I will be the first one to say, yes, Lord, I need your help. We love the Lord, yet we know with all honesty, that we cannot follow His commandments fully, isn't it? Right? And perhaps that is uh, where most of the condemnation we feel come from, because we cannot follow the commandments fully. The Holy Spirit is our helper. He helps us to love God. And Paul would develop this more fully in Ephesians 5.18, which I'm going to share with us. The Holy Spirit helps us by training us, okay? But this training is an unusual training, not merely a training in fortitude, that means willpower. It's not that. This training is a training in dependence, in letting another person, the Holy Spirit, impact you, for you cannot do it on your own. Now, this may come across to us as very unusual because a lot of the times we employ our willpower to do things. But this training that the Holy Spirit wants to give us is a training in dependence, in letting another person, the Holy Spirit, to impact you, for you cannot do it on your own. Now, Dallas Willard, he said this, the Christian life is what you do when you realize that you can do nothing. Interesting, isn't it? The Christian life is what you do when you realize that you can do nothing. Okay? That means you come to the end of your service and say, I can't do it. Now, to make it clearer, let's look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Paul said this, Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, let me explain to you, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit is actually an unusual command. Okay? It is unusual because of this. It is in the present tense, which means a continual action. But it is in a passive voice, which means to be acted upon. And then lastly, it is in the imperative mood, which means to bring something from the possible to reality. It's a very strange command. In the present tense, on a continual basis, but in the passive voice, which means to be acted upon. And then it is something that is possible. All right? And we praise the Lord for that. It is not just wishful thinking, but it is something that is possible to bring something from the possible to become a reality in your life and in my life. Now, simply put it, we are commanded to be continually acted upon by another person, the Holy Spirit, to be open to and dependent upon the movement of God. And it involves watching, sometimes waiting, listening to the other, who is the Holy Spirit. This is something that we are not familiar with. Why? Why? Why are we not familiar with this? Because since the fall in Genesis 3, the Holy Spirit has departed from Adam and Eve, and this is also true of us. Right? What is left in Adam and Eve, and consequently in us as well, is only the human spirit. The I. And the I is set up as the engine of our decision, of our action, and of our being. That means we, are, we don't have the Holy Spirit. We only have the human spirit, my spirit. And it is my spirit who sits on the throne and decides on all the things in my life. So when we become a Christian, 
Though we have the Holy Spirit living in us, so when we become a Christian, the Holy Spirit now lives in us. Now, even though when that happens, we are still very used to the I, the human spirit taking the lead in all things. Okay? And that is the truth. We are still very used to taking action, being led by the human spirit, instead of being open to the other person, the Holy Spirit. And so, to be continually acted upon by another person, the Holy Spirit, to be open to and dependent upon the movement of God is something we need training in. We need training in. Now, Dallas Billet, again, he said this, The Christian life is not active. The Christian life is not passive. The Christian life is interactive. That means you interacting with the Holy Spirit. It's important for us to get hold of this. Now, okay, let's take the real-life example to illustrate. You recall what I said about anger and hatred on the 29th of April? If you have forgotten, I encourage you to go back and listen to the sermon, and also today's sermon as well, to, to, to have the two things bind together. Now, the full sermon, of course, I won't go into it, but in short, it is this. This is Jesus' teaching on loving your enemy, Matthew 5, verse 43 to 44. You have heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Now, I can think that I fail to obey the commandments of God. And as such, do not love God because I cannot love my enemy, right? Sometimes when we read that verse, how can God, how can I love my enemy? And then, you know, the picture of the person comes to mind. I, I, I cannot, <laughs> I cannot, I cannot. Whoever, right? But anger and hatred are transitional emotions. You remember what I said that? Anger and hatred are transitional emotions. They are to transit Right? That means anger and, and hatred, they are to transit to enemy love. The question is, how can the transition take place? Well, the answer is this, to be open to and dependent upon the movement of God, to be continually acted upon by another person, the Holy Spirit. And so that means to speak to the Lord and let the Holy Spirit transform you. The message version of Psalm 4, verse 4 to 5, tells us this. Complain if you must. That means when you have anger and hatred. Complain if you must, but do not lash out. Keep your mouth shut and let your heart do the talking. And then do what? Bring your case before God and wait for His verdict. So it is about bringing our anger, our hatred before God. It is about talking to the Holy Spirit. And by doing so, we are actually opening up our minds, our hearts, to let the Holy Spirit transform us, right? You see, I'm so used to the I in me that I've lost the ability to let the Holy Spirit in me to lead and transform me. I mean, that's the truth. By being a Christian does not mean that the bad in you will naturally go away. It stays. And the only way it will go away is letting the Holy Spirit transform you. And we are commanded, and I like to remind us that we are commanded to be continually acted upon by another person, the Holy Spirit, to be open to and dependent upon the movement of God. So my dear friends, brothers and sisters, in summary it is this, if there is only love without the commandments, what happens? Problematic, right? But if it is on the other hand, the commandments without love, what happens? Our Christian life becomes legalistic. And we don't, the funny thing is that we don't just impose upon ourselves, we impose on others as well. I do this, you also must do this, right? And even when I cannot do that, you also must do this. Go to church. But I don't go to church. <laughs> you know? So, you see, so the commandments without love becomes legalistic. 
And lastly, what we want is loving God and others as Jesus taught us, which is holistic, which is to remember, first of all, the love of God for us. The love of God for us. Sometimes we can become so familiar with the love of God, it doesn't mean anything anymore. You get it? We, we want to remember the love of God for us. And secondly, we want to be open to the Holy Spirit. We want to be open. We, that's, that's where be filled with the Holy Spirit means. Right? It is in the present tense. It means every day we need to do it. But it is in the passive voice, which means we allow the Holy Spirit to act on us. All right? And it is not a wishful thinking. It is something that is possible. You can be transformed. You and I, we can be transformed. Right? It may take a long time, but we will transform by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'd like to invite the worship team to come forward and to just minister to us with this uh, song, but with the music first. And this song we have sang just now, it reminds us of this. God, your love is higher. Higher than the heaven. God, your mercy is deeper. Deeper than the earth. And God, your grace is wider, wider than the ocean. And Lord, I need your love. Lord, we need your love. We need your mercy. We need your grace. Later on, as you sing this song, I, I want you to be open to God's love and be open to the working of the Holy Spirit in your life today. You have heard the message and the Lord is doing something in your, in your work. You know, it's getting... You need a bit, little bit of getting used to because we are so, we have the human spirit always directing us. But today, we say, God, I am here. I present myself to you. Here I am. Holy Spirit, I am here. I present myself to you. Here I am. Today, in our midst, I, I do sense that some of you have come to a plateau in your walk with God. And you're longing for a deeper walk with God. Whether you can feel Him or you cannot feel Him, it doesn't matter. But you're longing for a deeper walk with God. For some others, you are struggling with a relationship issue. And God is calling you to come. Open your heart to Him. For some others yet, you are wondering what is the purpose of studying and what is the purpose and meaning of life. You're asking all those questions. But today I want to invite you to experience and encounter the love of God and open up your heart to Him. Open your heart to the Holy Spirit and see what He has to say to you with all those questions in your mind. For some others, you are at the cross crossroad of your life. You are about to make some important decisions. But you're not sure Open your heart to the love of God. Open your heart to the Holy Spirit. And for some others, you are struggling with a health issue. And you're asking yourself, why now? Why me? I want to invite you to open your heart to the love of God and open your heart to the Holy Spirit. Let's invite us to stand and let us sing this song together.
wider. Your grace is wider, wider than the ocean. I will never let you go, never ever let you go. Your love is higher. Your love is higher. John chapter 4 we remember the Samaritan woman who was at the well yes. the last man she slept with wasn't even her husband we also remember the thief on the cross yes. he never knew Jesus until it was about the time we were all all unworthy of his love yet he chose to love us he loved me and he loves each one of you as we continue to sing I'm sure God is speaking out to each one of you he's saying my son my daughter I love you I'd like to invite us to sing this song again in response to this unfathomable love that He has for us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This afternoon, you have spoken to us through your word. 
Lord, we thank you that you're reminding us today of your great love, unfathomable love, unfailing love for each and every one of us. And Lord, I pray that we will encounter this love again and again and again on a daily basis. And Lord, today we know also from your word that you have not left us as orphans, but Lord, that you have given us a helper, the Holy Spirit, and we need him. We need him, Lord, because on our own, we can't fulfill, we can't follow fully the commandments that God has given to us. We need him. And we want to open up our hearts to him today to transform us from inside out, to transform us deeply, not just on the surface by some behavioural change, but Lord, deeply in our hearts, oh God. And we know today that it is possible, it's not wishful thinking, that as we open up our hearts to you, the Holy Spirit will act upon us and we will be transformed. We will be transformed to become more and more like Jesus Christ. So Lord, that's where we are today. We come just as we are. We come just as we are. And friends, today, I want to open up this time. If some of us would like prayer for any specific issues in your life, I'd like to invite you to come forward. As a team continue to minister to us with this song, I just invite you to come forward. You need prayer. You need to encounter the love of God. You need to open up the heart to the Holy Spirit. Come forward. Let us receive a fresh touch from the Lord. And for some of us, perhaps you are just, just comfortable sitting where you are. That's okay, that's fine. Wait upon the Lord. He has got something to say to you. So friends, as we sing this again, come forward. The pastors are here. The leaders are here. But leaders, even for yourself, come forward. Receive a fresh touch from the Lord. If you need a fresh touch from the Lord, I invite you to come forward. The Lord is here. He's speaking to us. He's reaching out to you. just to just keep our gaze on our loving up our Father. It doesn't matter that you think you're not worthy. Just come forward. Just come forward. His arms are wide open. And if you're thinking, oh, I'm not like Vincent, I'm not like Uncle Andrew, I'm not like the thief on the cross. I urge you just to reflect a little bit more. Yes, you may be better than me, better than the thief on the cross. But this love is not be dependent on how much our worth is.
come into his embrace once again. thank you for being with us here today in so many different ways each of us we have got our own needs and you know them one by one because you are the one who formed us you're the one who calls us and so lord today as we even depart from this place we know that we are not living away alone the holy spirit is with us and help us oh god to learn how to walk with the holy spirit how to open up our hearts to him on a daily basis and continue lord to transform us from inside out moment by moment thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord and in jesus name we pray amen